Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X Cover-Up and Planetary Formation. Where do asteroids come from? Now, Planet X systems stellar core observations have led to the conclusion that these objects are the remains of once living stars and planets, which have died and are now the cores, hence the name stellar core, of these celestial bodies surrounded by the pre-field, which used to be the outer layers of these objects. These objects come into the solar system and become energized by absorbing material from living solar system objects like the Sun and the Earth. They induce matter creation events in the core of these living celestial objects. These matter creation events lead to the emergence of matter in a liquid plasma or magma form from the core of the living celestial objects and the explosive emergence of this matter causes CME events on the sun and volcanic eruptions on the earth. And you may look at Article 501 entitled Planet X Induced Volcanic Eruptions or like an Earth CME. And here you see one of these objects Going in towards the sun, it is surrounded by a huge cloud of debris. You can see how many pieces, are, how many objects there are around. This object turned out to actually be larger than the sun, so it must once have been a huge star. And it is surrounded by huge amounts of debris. It may include its own uh, planetary cores and their own debris as well. But it is definitely huge, and all of them are surrounded by this cloud material, which is actually water in the form of droplets. And this is where water clouds come from. They enter our atmosphere. And I have written about that in recent articles. Now, Article 424, entitled Large Planet X Object and Large Debris Field May Endanger Earth, I wrote about this object and I showed how large it is, I estimated its size. Now the Planet X system objects absorb the liquid plasma and gain gravitational photon energy by doing so and eventually manage, manage to produce their own outer negative layer thus turning into re-energized celestial objects. And you may look at Article 532 entitled Planet X or Comet Re-Energizing Process. However, they will still have dead cores. The larger ones which went to the sun turn into gas giants and the smaller ones which come to the earth turn into earth moons. And you may look at article 523 entitled Planet X and the solar system Jupiter and all gas giants or recent acquisitions. And article 526 entitled Planet X and the moon. The moon has not always been in the sky. But even the smaller objects, which are not able to induce matter creation events in the Earth's core, will absorb material in a fluid form. They absorb uh, either atmosphere or liquid water from the Earth's surface. And these ones, will be, we usually call them water spouts. Uh, they are due to the objects being inside the Earth's atmosphere that then pull water upwards towards uh, the surface. In addition, the objects come into the solar system surrounded in water, which is in the form of small droplets of water, and thus in the liquid phase, and therefore in the form which we call clouds. And as I showed in figure one, the water came from the planets that died and is now part of the debris field and the densest fluid material that the cores can hold on to. And you may look at Article 529 entitled Planet X Debris Field and Water Clouds for more details. Now here you see, um, this is a composite LASCO C2 and C3 image. And you can see uh, the sun is here. This indicates the size of the sun. This is one of the Planet X system stellar cores. And as you can see, it's enveloped in CME plasma because these objects provoke the sun into these events. And you can see that this material that makes up the CME plasma looks liquid. And that is because it is liquid. It's basically magma. Both the Earth and the sun produce this material from the core. 
And you may look at Article 5, 3, 8 entitled, Planet X star appears in LASCO composite image, liquid CME plasma. The living cores of celestial objects are able to have CMEs and volcanic eruptions because planets and stars form from the inside outwards. Planets start as fluid ejected by a star in a matter creation event. The liquid plasma condenses into a core after emerging from the parent star and then starts creating its own matter, which is also in a liquid form, and which turns into the outer layers of the planet. The material separates according to density with the lowest density material moving toward the surface so that even surface water and atmospheric gases emerge from within. In Article 524 entitled Mercury created by the Sun due to Planet X, I show that since Mercury is the planet closest to the Sun, it must be the planet with the most gravitational potential in the solar system, and that it must therefore have a very large core estimated to be 80% of the whole planet which then indicates that Mercury is a new planet that recently emerged from within the Sun and is still in the process of forming itself through creating its own matter. Now, and here I explain why this matter creation event occurs whenever a planet X system stellar core closely approaches one of the living solar system objects. In this case, um, I think I meant this to be the Earth, so this would be the Earth's core. These are the outer layers of the Earth. The Earth's core produces a, pos a strong positive electric field that ends just below the surface. Whilst this object doesn't have a negative outer layer, it doesn't have enough gravitational energy to produce it, to push electrons within its matter outwards to its outer layers. And its gravitational energy is so low that the outer layers of the planet broke apart and became this debris field. But it still has, it still retains a strong electric field. But this electric field does not end, it continues right through space. And so it overlaps the Earth's own internal electric field. And that means that it produces a very strong electric field close to the core. And that then makes the core unstable. And when the core becomes unstable, it ejects light. It, light comes out of it. And then the light, because of the very strong electric field, um, turns into matter. And you may look at Article 5 to 6 entitled Planet X and the Moon. The Moon has not always been in the sky for more details. And so does the Planet X system observation show that planets emerge from within stars, formed from the inside outwards through the cores creating the outer layers of the plasma? This conclusion agrees with the astronomer Alton Arp's observations of galaxies and quasars, which show that quasars were proto-galaxies and that they condense from material in the liquid phase which was ejected by active galactic nuclei. These quasars then proceeded to create their own matter which condensed into star clusters and stars which then would go to form uh, the arms of the galaxy. Alton Arp carefully detailed his observations and conclusions based on these in his book Seeing Red. These have led me to conclude that at the center of galaxies are white holes instead of black holes as matter issues from the center of galaxies and what is occurring is actually the exact opposite of what accepted astrophysics believes is occurring. And you may look at Article 1 to 6 entitled White Holes instead of Black Holes at the Center of Galaxies. Now it turns out that it is not just galactic nuclei that are white holes. All stars and all living planets also are white holes because they all form and eject their own matter from the inside. And you may look at Article 5 to 2 entitled Stellar Cores or Sources of Matter or White Holes. The universe works the same way at all levels. The same mechanism giving rise to nuclear reactions also give rise to matter creation events. And you may look at Article 533 entitled Planet X induces supernuclear reactions in the Earth's core. 
And this illustrates what actually occurs from, the act, from an active galactic nucleus, which is a very, very bright galactic nucleus, which therefore has an extremely strong electric field associated with it. And therefore, that it actually shows that it is unstable. And it is this instability that causes it to go through a matter creation event. It ejects gravitational energy as if it's just had too much. Ejects it in the form of light, which then turns into matter. And the matter it turns into is liquid. That matter then condenses into a dense proto-galaxy, a quasar, which in the course of time starts ejecting its own matter and forms from which then stars condense and then these arms come into being. These are formed from the material that the quasar, which then becomes the nucleus of a new galaxy, starts ejecting. This is exactly the same as what occurs with planets and stars. So this shows that the theory I have developed is self-consistent and logical. It does not have contradictions in it. It does not have contradictions because it is based on observation. Now the accepted theory on planetary formation is that pieces of dust and rock come together in a process called accretion, which eventually get large enough to be a planet. And this theory, as I have shown in Article 540, entitled The Accretion Theory of Planetary Formation is Impossible, is impossible. In addition, if accretion was a real process leading to planetary formation, why have not the pieces of rock and dust in the asteroid belt turned into a planet? They have not because those pieces of rock come from the debris fields of the planet X system objects. They are pieces of broken up planets. But the truth regarding the planet X system has been covered up for thousands of years and it continues to be covered up to this day. It is for this reason that most of the physics research, understanding and teaching is wrong and illogical. These illogical theories full of contradictions are meant to cause confusion and stop real understanding to emerge from emerging. Now, these incorrect and illogical theories and concepts are meant to keep the understanding of what is actually happening in the solar system regarding the planet X system from the Earth's population and particularly from the scientific community. This is why any scientist who deviates and starts understanding and getting closer to the truth is ejected from the scientific community or killed. James McKenney, who found and wrote in his book Planet X Comets and Earth Changes, that comets turn into clouds into planets was fired from his academic position in spite of being a wonderful teacher and doing brilliant published research. Dr. Robert Harrington, who most likely saw one of these comets, which are the same as Planet X objects, coming in surrounded by their huge debris fields, um, was killed. Dr. Eugene Schumacher, a planetary scientist and co-discoverer of the comet Schumacher-Levy 9, which impacted Jupiter and who must have realized that Jupiter was not just made of gas, but that it must have a solid surface just below the clouds of gas, was also killed. The reason why Jupiter must have a huge solid body, which must extend to just below the clouds, we see at its, uh, as its surface, is that it is a re-energized planet X object, and most likely the core of what was once a small star. Jupiter's core is dead and thus very low in gravitational energy, which makes the object seem to have much less mass and, of, and thus have much, le uh, much less density than it actually has. And you may look at Article 523 entitled Planet X and the Solar System, Jupiter and all gas giants or recent acquisitions. And this diagram illustrates planet X formation according to the planet X observation. So what we have, we have the core of a star which has too much energy, uh, becomes unstable, and goes through a matter creation event. In other words, it creates matter which is in the form of liquid 
positive ion plasma. It ejects the matter, it then con which then condenses into a planetary core, and it will then immediately start forming its own matter. It will, from the beginning, be able to have an electron lay on the outside, which insulates it, but it will not immediately have uh, an atmosphere. It will just have electrons on the outer uh, layer, which will be molten magma, basically. It will increase uh, that molten matter slowly, and also the outer uh, surface will start solidifying into a solid layer and eventually it turns into a fully formed planet. The matter creation stops when there is stability in the core. There is just enough matter um, and gravitational energy in the core to keep it stable. And so you end up with a planet that has formed from the inside outwards. And it agrees with Alton Arp's uh, observations of galaxies which go through exactly the same type of formation. So in conclusion, planets are ejected by stars. They are ejected as hot liquid plasma and condense into a core, which then ejects its own liquid plasma, which then turns into the outer layers of the planet. The same mechanism which was observed by Alton Harp in galaxy formation. Planetary formation due to accretion is an illogical theory which seems designed to cover up the presence and effects of the planet system on the solar system. Asteroids in the solar system come from the debris fields of the planet X system. They are pieces of broken up planets. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.